Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Shawnee University Football Press Conference. Today is Wednesday, October 19, 2016. At this time, we're going to give to the floor to Coach Jones as he introduces his player for today's press conference. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, to my left, we have uh, Dominique Hannibal. Uh, I guess we can start off with some questions. Well, Coach, uh, I guess we'll just start off from this past Saturday. Uh, overall, what was your assessment as it relates to, to your team? And did you feel like you, you saw some positives as well as, you know, highlight some of the things that you still think uh, your team needs to work on? Uh, yes, I did see some positives. Uh, we drove the ball down the field a couple times, but on the back end, of it, the negatives were uh, we, we turned the ball over. You know, a couple times we got inside the red zone and we didn't get points. We was on the three-yard line and ended up on the 40-yard uh, line by the end of the drive. And then as well, we was driving and we were like on the 25-yard line and uh, thought the quarterback should have threw the ball out of bounds and he kind of threw a little light ball and interception. So, you know, keeping the defense off the field is, is the key. Um, I thought defensively we played pretty good as a whole, but um, there's a couple drives where they stayed on the field too long penalties kind of hurt us defensively. We get a stop and then, you know, we jump off sides or roughing a pass or things like that. But we got to be a little bit more disciplined. Um, we talk about it each and every week. And when we get that cleared up, uh, we, we'll get some wins. But the turnovers have got to stop. We, we got to tune in and figure out a way to not turn the ball over. In regards to the quarterback play, uh, obviously the two plays that you had, um, we saw clearly one play um, where it was intercepted on uh, your sideline. And again, there was another one uh, later, I want to say in the second half, where the uh, ball was thrown in the coverage and Livingstone's linebacker was right there just to pop right in the shoulder pads. Uh, how do you, you know, obviously those are the types of plays that it's not something you can coach a player out of. How do you get those players to understand and once they're on the field, they have to make better decisions like that. Um, you just have to continue to work with them in practice. You know, we got a freshman quarterback, and if you go back and look at his film, he was a great high school football player. And a lot of times he made throws that he shouldn't have made but completed the ball. So I think he's still kind of looking at it as high school. And, and, and on this level, you know, the game is a lot faster. And sometimes you just got to make smart decisions. When in doubt, we try to tell our guys, you know, the quarterbacks to throw the ball away. And, just got to continue to, to, to preach that, you know, in the game is just make sure we keep them aware of that. But the one thing we can't do when he make mistakes is just uh, we got to coach him up when he comes to the sideline. You know, you, a lot of times you see coaches digging in their players and, and, um, during the game, but a, as a quarterback, you know, you can't, you, you know, you do that during the week. You can't do that in the game. You got to keep him focused and ready to go. And I think we did a good job with that. It just Tim just has to continue to grow up. Hannibal. Try to do better. Each game is just a different game. Try to win. Well, on a positive note, um, you had a, a career high game high, 18 total tackles, nine solo, nine assisted, and you are also named the CIAA Defensive Lineman of the Week. Uh, can you just talk about what motivates you, what inspired you on Saturday? Because you had a, a very good game. To be honest, what inspired me was my teammate Dwight. He's been my D tackle next to me for the past three years. I've never seen him in my life emotional like that. You know, when he got hurt, it was a drop down. You know what I'm saying? Like, defensively, we're a gap sound. So, every person means something to our defense. As in, you go to D1, first string probably like 92, second string probably like 88. When you coming down here to our roster, a Ross is very small. So the next person behind him is not always going to do as much as the other person. So I took it upon myself is now Dwight is gone, I have to step up. I have to control everything on this line. Simple as that. It wasn't for me to, to be the best. It wasn't for me to take over. It was for me to help the defense. We lost one of our captives, one of our, our key components. Animal, coming into the game, you you uh, uh, right on the team as the third uh, top tackler on the team. Sure. Three, uh, I believe, three sacks or three, uh, at least a sack for a couple of yards. What have you. Uh, what what will it 
take for this defense to find a way to get back in, into the backfield a little bit more frequently? What's been the, the toughest obstacle you've had in the team in trying to get a little bit more rushes? Because I guess against uh, some the pass games of the Central Elizabeth City State, you all were wreaking havoc on that quarterback. It seems that this defense uh, right now is the, the most experienced unit on the field. Um, but it, it appears that every time you get in a situation where you remain on the field a long time, it really gets gets you guys, uh, I guess the productivity is not as high as in the first half. How do you still try to find ways of keeping you and your teammates up when you're in those periods of play where you know, obviously, that this squad has to do what it has to do to get off the field? To be honest, sir, we don't have the more experience on defense. It's more of the, the heart. Okay. Each level, the, the D-line, you got me, you got Dwight, you got Vinny. The linebackers, you got Kilo. Corner, you got Bar Parker. All experienced people. So we take everybody under us and try to make them better. The freshmen that he brought in on the defensive side, like Devin Hunt, who's leading the CIs. You got... Uh, Braxton King coming off at the end. You got Thurman Trapp at the other corner. Everybody they brought in are people that not just want to play, but want to learn to be better. So on the defensive side, nobody's really down. All right, this happens. All right, what, what do we got to do? Hand boss the next step. Parker, he ran this. What we got to do? So it's more of a learning process. That's why we seem so much better. Because it's not like on offense when you're down, you got to find that spark to get back. The defense, every tackle was like, oh, yeah, we, we can win this game. We can stop them. That's why our defense feels so light. So I feel like second half, we know offensively what they're going to do. So it just, it's whatever, how we play it is how, how we step up. Dwight Campbell, obviously he got hurt um, against Livingstone. Will he be able to play against John C. Smith Saturday? What's his status? Um, as of right now, if, I, if he was to have to go today, he probably would. You know, want to make sure he's um, at his best. Um, worst case scenario, he'd probably sit him out this week. But uh, we got some guys that come in and have to step up. And like Hannibal said, his role becomes a bigger role when, when Dwight is out the game. But um, we've had the injury bug each and every week. But we have to figure it out each and every week. You know, can't worry about those things. Those guys that get hurt become coaches now try to help out the guy that's, um, that was behind him. So we can't complain about it. We just got to continue to grind. Coach Jones, uh, you and a few other coaches um, have been invited to be featured on the Bachelor Pad. And uh, my understanding that happened yesterday. How was that experience? Um, it was a good experience. You know, uh, it, it's, it's a pleasure that, that, that people see and understand what, what we're trying to do. We're going, we're, we're going through a process, you know, and that process, when I came in, was not what I've been in, envisioned the way it is now, but it is a process. You know, I got to continue to grind and continue to, uh, the kids to understand that you know everything happens for a reason, and you know things are gonna. It's a it's a light at the end of the tunnel. We just got to keep working hard, and just got to believe in each and everything that the coaching staff are, are, are preaching, and the coaching staff has to believe in each and everything that the players are doing, and make sure that we correct it on the field. But it was a it, it, was, it was a good experience. It's good to hear people that understand what you're going through and know, you know, if you go to our practice, we don't look like an 0-7 football team by far. But, you know, um, you know the, the losses have collected. But um, one thing we're going to do is, uh, like I tell Hannibal and all the rest of the players, something good happened, we're going to keep playing. And something bad happened, we're going to keep playing. And I think we've done that. We just need to uh, eliminate a lot more of the bad. Coach, it seemed like Achilles Hill for us seemed to be PAT field goal. So one of the maybe three or four games we had at least a PAT or a field goal block. Do you think we can do to correct that? Uh, we got to find some people that, you know, that's going to take that serious. I take special teams very serious, you know, and a lot of times looking from the outside in, you know, a lot of people want to put it on Benny. Benny's a heck of a, uh, a kicker. It's, it's, you know, it's totally not him. but. In the stats, it shows that he's missing field goals, but we got to do a better job up front of blocking, you know, and, and it makes me nervous a lot of times getting in the red zone where we can leave with some points and we go for it on fourth down because we're not sure 
you know, it's a 50-50 chance that we might make the field goal. So we've been working a lot harder. That, that um, part of the special teams has been live every day, and we're going to continue to be live every day until we get that, get that correct. Looking ahead, um, what, what has your attention about JCSU um, coming into Saturday's game? Uh, they have the best free safety in black college football. He, that guy can absolutely play football. I was a defensive back, and I'm aware of that. You know, we're not gonna go. To, we're not gonna go away from him, but we're not gonna try to just throw the ball at him all day because he's he's a great football player. Um, they have some good veteran um, defensive players. They lost their starting quarterback, but the backup quarterback is 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 doing pretty good as well. Um, got a decent offensive line and a pretty uh, scat scat back. And um, got one or two receivers that we got to pay attention to. We can't be looking in the backfield, because if we do, they'll get behind us, they can run. So it's a challenge for us, you know, uh, we're back at our home, and we're just going to try to grind and make sure that we come out with our, with our first victory. Uh, coach Jones, um, I've also read that, you know, you've been selected to coach at the HBCU Spirit of America Bowl. How was that experience for you? Well, that's a great experience. I mean, it was a surprise to me, you know, being, you know, I interviewed for it early in the season. I guess they went off of the resume instead of going off of, you know, what this season is um, uh, looking like. But, you know, that, that just shows that, you know, that we're going in the right direction, you know, and that helps out the recruit, you know, those type of things like that. Hopefully some of the guys on our um, football team will be able to play in it. But it's definitely an honor to represent Shaw University um, in that bowl game, you know, um, there's a whole lot of coaches that got interviewed for the job, and I'm just fortunate enough that, you know, I'm blessed that they chose me. I guess they saw something in me to, to be their leader. I want to do the best I can to represent the university. Coach Jones, in our standard defense, how many linebackers are we running? Uh, in the, uh, on the, in the game? Yeah, we, in, in, our, in our standard defensive, uh, formation. How, how, do we have two linebackers or three linebackers? Well, we have two linebackers. The third linebacker is a linebacker slash defensive back. So okay. we're in a four-two-five, and that that third linebacker is probably like your best athlete. You use the blitz him off the edge, and, and whenever we need to cover some of the receivers, you can cover. Them. So okay. um, this it's a four-two-five, but sometimes we end up with a, a four-three, which that guy that's outside ends up coming inside. So, okay, kinda, so we have a linebacker who is kind of like a hybrid. Exactly. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Coach, looking at the stats uh, from John C. Smith, uh, one thing that you you alluded to earlier in, in your opening remarks, um, it appears that John C. Smith is allowing opponents at an eighty-one percent rate of scoring against them in, the, in their red zone. Uh, is this the time where this might be a game where if you can get this offense into Smith's red zone that, you know, you might have a better opportunity of getting some of those scores. Well, definitely um, looking into that. Uh, I saw that stat as well. So that's one of the things that we're concentrating on this week. We get in the red zone, you know, that's that's what we call, we talk about it, um, the money zone. So hopefully we can tune in. You know, I might take a time out and just get the guys together and kind of let them, let them know that how important it is to either gain yards or stay where we at so possibly we can kick a field goal. But we got to put points on the board early and often. Um, just go back to when we played uh, um, UNC Pembroke, when um, we scored points early and we went in the halftime up. So I just we're, what we're trying to do is make sure that we go up, um, we go in halftime, you know, in the game or either up and try to finish out in that third or fourth quarter. And is that something that you also look at past film on the same types of opponents you, the, the two teams have played because obviously they lost against uh, uh, Federal State last week. Federal State got into the red zone six times, four to five times. So is that something that you also compare notes as to how you did against Federal State versus what you yeah. possibly yeah. counter against? Smith? We definitely do. You do look into that. You know, but at the end of the day, our guys, you, um, when you look at that, you got to also let them know that, you know, we're, we're we're 0-7, they're one in, I think, six, and you know, they're trying to get a win. So everybody is trying to make sure they play their best game against us and want to get a win. So we can't look at 
Um, them Federal State putting up 30 points on them, and you know it was, it was, it was a blowout. We got to make sure that we come in and, and understand that each and every team that we face are going to come in and play their best game. Livingstone came in and played their by far the best game they played all year. And we just got to understand that we can't go out there and people just going to fall down to us. We got to play a perfect game and not um, turn the ball over. How confident are you heading into the Saturday's game? Uh, very confident. You can actually tell the difference from camp to now. A lot of people is more motivated and more in tune. So I feel like this game is going to be a, a rude awakening. A lot of people don't understand this. <clears throat> we don't have a lot of seniors. We don't have a lot of juniors. We have a lot of freshmen. You feel me? So confidently, I feel great. I really do. Because it's a different type of freshman than we, we, we used to. We used to freshmen that's coming in that just want to be part of the team. As these freshmen here, they all fight to start. They all fight to, to be a part of this, regardless of their record, regardless of where they come from or who's in front of them. So me being a senior, I love that. That's what people understand. We we always seven as we are, but a lot of people don't understand. A regular football roster in Division Two probably seventy deep, maybe seventy five. We have 33, 34 freshmen. If we wanted to win the championship this year. We would have went and recruited all JUCO players, D one that was hurt, but we wanted to build a dynasty. So the freshmen that we got here, I'm I'm truly behind. I really yeah. feel confident. Yeah, well, and what what keeps you? And I'm hearing you. It's your, your voice never wavers. Confidence seems to stay on the same level. What motivates you when okay. you put on your suit every day, uh, especially game time, and even in practice, when you see those freshmen, uh, teammates, and calf, or wherever? What motivates you and, and the rest of your teammates that are seniors? Just love for the game. It's not, it's not the money, it's not, not trying to go to lead, it's not anything. It's, if you love this game, you're going to do everything you want to do for it, regardless. I'm from, I'm from a small area. You know, I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia. It's a small area. You either in games or you play sports. The high school I went to was nothing but athletes. So I'm used to being around people that want to be champions, that want to be great, want to be something in life. You know what I'm saying? The difference between this, last, this, this season and last season, last season we won one and nine, this season we won seven. The difference between last season is it wasn't coaching. People wasn't stepping up. I love Coach Max, but people wasn't stepping up. This season, everybody is behind Coach Jones. If he wanted to win the championship, like I said, he would have went and got Juco players. He would have went and got the people that were going to Central that wasn't able to go D1, that can go D2. He could have did all that. But the thing was, he wanted to build a dynasty. He wanted to build it where in three, four years, this is really my squad, this is really my team. I made this. I made everything happen. He brought freshmen. People look at us on the sideline. We're a small team. Oh, they, they out of it. They out of it because we got nothing but freshmen that came from winning programs. They don't know what losing is. So that's where it comes into being seniority, being upperclassmen, to show them, like, listen, this is not high school. Everybody gets paid just like you. That person that lined up in front of you probably was all state just like you. It's a man sport. You're going against people that's up to 24, 25 years old. You're 18. Are you going to step up or are you going to back down? Regardless of the record is, if you watch any game, we always in it. At the end of the game, we always get that respect no matter what. We not going to lay down for nobody. That's what people understand. Any more questions? Yeah, I have one question. I, I, I want to just say something before I, I got a commitment, so I, I, I'm not leaving because I'm not interested, because I'm very interested but I've got to go somewhere. But I just want to say that uh, the, the games that I've been able to, to, to attend, I've seen some good things happen. We make mistakes, and, and, and sadly we made a couple of uh, some, some wonderful drives down the field, and we had interceptions on both of them, and that really hurt us. But I've seen some really good things happen, and one of the things that really sticks out in my mind is late in the game, uh, on a punt return, we, we, were, we were receiving a punt, and one of our players was in a position to make a block, but he pulled up because if he had blocked the guy, he would have blocked him in the back. And that's one of the things, even on the, in, in the NFL, you see those blocks in the backs almost on every punt uh, that they make. And I thought that was just a great, intelligent move that he made. Because he was ready to make it, but he pulled up because the guy had his back to him. He would have, he 
people negated a very nice uh, return for us. So I, I thought that was just an outstanding thinking play. Uh, uh, a lot of times people think athletes are just big and strong. But it's a thinking game. And that young man was thinking. And I know that many of our players are, are maturing and, and making better decisions week by week. And I just want to encourage Coach Jones and you and all of the other players to know that as frustrating as the season may have been so far, we are all in this together. And the Shaw family is behind you. And we appreciate you going out there and playing so hard and representing us. And thank you. I, I apologize, but I got I to go. But I shall return. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any more questions? Um, going off what he was saying about seeing the good things, what were the good things that you saw Saturday? Um, we, 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 we kept playing. You know, um, early in the year, a couple games, you can see where we were getting beat. They kind of kind of tanked it a little bit, and that's one of the things we preach each and every week. One thing, I don't care what the score is, you cannot tank, tank it. You got to continue to play, and those guys continue to play. Defense, like I said, we saw some spurts where, you know, some, some greatness on um, offense. We drove the ball a couple times up and down the field, but turnovers kind of kind of hurt us. But um, as a whole, I think we're, we're getting better each and every week. But um, to piggyback on what you're saying about uh, what makes um, our guys confident, and it's a little saying that a confident coach breeds confident football players. And I'm a very confident coach no matter what the record is, but I'm confident that we're going to continue to get better each and every week. And that's what it's about, you know. Um, it's a learning process for all of us, you know. I would love to be seven and zero, but everything happens for a reason, and we we gonna we gonna take it like men, and we are gonna get better each and every week. Right before I guess we close, talk about getting better. One thing I did notice on Saturday um, that I didn't really have to say too much on the air. Special teams seems to be getting a little better. Field position, uh, we really did a great job of making sure that. We made it a little tough for Livingstone. We didn't give them any penalties or anything. Uh, I think that's something that, that looked positive. It's always good to be, uh, you know, better on special teams. And, you know, we work hard at it. So we want to continue to work hard at it and, and, and try to get some wins using special teams, yeah. using our defense and as well as offense. Any more questions? Any more questions? Well, that concludes our football press conference for today. Coach Jones, I'll be handing good luck to you guys on Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it.